Hey, what's up everybody? Hammerheart Metal Reviews here once again. Today we're doing another discography ranking for you and this one was by request. I took a vote a little while ago out of however many lets you put on there, five or six different bands. And the one that got the most votes that you wanted to see is the mighty Bal Sagoth. So if you are unfamiliar with this band, they are from England or they were from England. They are not around anymore. Um, they put out six albums in their existence there around from like 1993 to 2013, around 20 years or so. And this is symphonic, epic black metal, but it's very unique. Like even just saying that doesn't really describe this music enough. It's a really unique approach and very interesting vocals where a lot of it is almost like narration style with this low baritone speaking voice, but then it brings in the black metal rasps as well. Um, most of the members of this band, once they disbanded, they went on to form a new band titled Cull. They only have one album with a different vocalist, but the one, the main vocalist from Balsagoth, Lord Byron, he was not involved in that project, but he was the main guy that wrote all the lyrics and concepts. Like all of these albums are in this like imagined world and it's just full of like fantasy type lyrics that just transport you to this imagined world and it sounds like they are it's like a soundtrack to these epic battles it's just like really well crafted songs where the keyboards really are the prominent feature here where most of the songs are built around the keyboard melodies it's really eccentric and maybe a little bit over the top but i really dig it this would be for fans of bands maybe like cradle of filth or emperor very loose comparisons there but bow sagoth is so unique i don't think there's really any other bands that sound exactly like this. Like it's just a very, it's like storytelling over the scope of black metal. But even when I say black metal, it brings in some power metal elements in some albums. Almost every one of their albums has a somewhat different sound and different approach while it still always sounds like Val Sagoth. But yeah, it's just magical keyboard melodies throughout that would almost suit like sword and sorcery type of films. So if anything I just said sounds like it might be up your alley and you haven't heard this band before, I strongly suggest you go check them out. I'm going to rank these six albums from my least favorite down to my favorite, but I will say that all six albums are very good. So even what I'm putting in last place is not a bad album by any stretch, but something has to come in last. Let's find out what order I have got these in. All right, coming in six, which might be a surprise because usually early stuff it tends to be higher up on my list. I usually like early works of bands, but in this case, their debut is my least favorite Balsagoth album, and that is A Black Moon Broods Over Lemuria from 1995. So compared to the rest of their discography, this is easily like the most dark and menacing album that they've done. It's just a really evil and grim atmosphere. Got more of an old school, like raw sound to this and compared to what would come later on. This actually features like some low guttural vocals as well, almost in like a death metal style that don't feature on any other album. This is kind of the oddball out of their discography. It's got like heavier tuned guitars with almost like a death metal feel to it or like an old school black metal feeling but with keys in there as well. And this in this album, it kind of just sounds like a band that's really still trying to forge their sound, playing around with it, trying to find their unique identity. And like I said, this is a quite a bit different style than what would follow, but it's still very good. Like this is still a very enjoyable album. I do feel better material would follow as they would mature as songwriters. So I don't want this to sound like this is not a good album. I still very much enjoy it. I just have it a notch below the rest but still some great tracks on here. The title track is awesome. The Ravening as well. So all in all, don't skip it just because I'm putting it in six. Still a very solid album in sixth place. All right, up next in fifth, let's go to the exact opposite end of their discography. I started with their first album. Up next is their very last album from 2006, The Thonic Chronicles. So this one, I mean, I haven't talked about all the albums in the middle yet, but this album kind of saw them going with a little bit of a throwback style compared to what they had done on the two preceding albums. This one kind of went back to their earlier style, a little bit darker in tone, not maybe as dark as the debut, but kind of bringing in some elements from the different like times throughout their career, elements from the different albums, from the different phases of their career. This is more of a guitar oriented album than maybe as much of the preceding albums that were way more focused on the keyboard melodies. Um, but this one, I find it a really fitting close to their discography. This is their last album that they ever did. 
and it just brought their career to a close in fitting fashion and kind of taking pieces from each of their albums and almost just forging it into one final output of mu musical output and yeah just all in all still a very solid album i don't think it's quite on par with their best but still a very good album favorite tracks here invocations beyond the outer world night is awesome the obsidian crown unbound very long song titles is also what this band is known for but yeah all in all still a good album in fifth place all right up next in fourth i'm going to the album right before that which was their fifth album overall from 2001 atlantis ascend it so this one, if you've never heard the band before, this is probably like their most accessible or most like easy listening album, I could say, out of their discography. It's just full of melody and kind of follows the path of the previous album that I haven't talked about yet, where it kind of leans into the power metal and traditional heavy metal elements of their sound a little bit harder. Like you just feel those influences. It almost doesn't sound like a black metal album other than the raspy vocals but guitar wise it's very much in like a power metal style with keyboard melodies just glorious melodies um like i said this one another just stellar addition to their discography i'm putting it in fourth but that's just because i like the other three albums a little bit more but this one could easily be up there this is a very good album uh favorite tracks are the title track atlantis ascendant as well as the chronicle of shadows all in all, solid album in fourth place. But the next three, to me, are the ones that are like, wow, a notch above the three that I just talked about. These next three are absolute masterpieces. I love these next three albums to death. Let's see what order I have got them in. So, in third place, I'm going to their fourth album, which is from 1999, The Power Cosmic. So, kind of like with what I said about Atlantis Ascendant that kind of followed the trajectory of this album, here, the Power Cosmic also leans way harder into the power metal influence than they had before on their first three albums. The approach is maybe a little bit over the top. It's not nearly as dark or ominous as their early works, but I just really enjoy this. Like the keys are a little bit cheesy, you could say, but I dig it a lot. It puts a smile on my face and it just adds this like glorious epicness to it that you don't always get in black metal. But yeah, they're doing their own thing here with their maybe somewhat theatrical approach, but it's just a fun album from start to finish. It combines that symphonic black metal with elements of power metal to just create something that is uniquely Bal Sagoth. And this is one of the best albums in this specific style. This one did see them maybe bring in some more like spacey or cosmic themes, just tales of cosmic battles, which is a little bit different than what they had done before while there's still elements in it. But this was their major label debut, which did, yeah, maybe had somewhat of an influence in changing their direction a little bit. The production was a little bit cleaner than their first three albums. But nonetheless, I absolutely love this album. Favorite tracks here, um, The Voyagers Beneath, The Mare in Brium. Can't even say that. Their, album, their song titles are insane. Uh, Callisto Rising, that's easier to say. And that's probably my favorite track on this album. Just stellar, stellar, stellar stuff here. That's in third place. All right, that leads two more to go. These next two was really hard to pick the order. I kind of go back and forth all the time as to which one of these is actually my favorite. But for today, in second place, I'm going to their sophomore album, which is from 1996, Starfire Burning Upon the Ice Veiled Throne of Ultima Thule. So, yeah, insanely long album title. This one stepped everything up from the debut. It's got a really like epic, icy atmosphere and the songwriting just so much improved over the debut in my opinion. This is just so majestic and powerful. Just symphonic fantasy metal. There's yeah, elements of black metal, elements of power metal, but it's just Bal Sagoth style epic fantasy metal. I'll call it that. To me, this is the album where they really came into their own and forged their identity. While they still obviously sounded like themselves on the debut, this is where they really got that formula right and would just keep tweaking it on subsequent albums. But this is just triumphantly epic music. If you've never heard the band before, this might be a good album to start with to kind of see what you're in store for and if you are going to enjoy them or not. I had a hard time not putting this in first because this is just such a crazy good album. But yeah, putting it in second place is pretty high up there too. Favorite tracks here, the title track. To dethrone the witch queen of Matos Kuhn also is amazing. All in all, front to back, amazing release. That's why it's in second place. That just leaves one. My favorite Bal Sagoth album is their third album. The album right after the one I just talked about from 1998, Battle Magic. 
This one compared to the first two completely changed the atmosphere around as opposed to being maybe dark and grim. This one's more of like full of pomp and joy. It just like completely changed it up while still retaining their sound. Like maybe it's a little bit more accessible than those first two albums and lighter in mood. But the atmosphere here is just full of fun and triumph and glory. Like, I'm not meaning this in a bad way. This is a good change in this case. Not that I didn't like the previous album, but why put out the same album with the exact same atmosphere over and over again? They completely shifted gears here and did something a little more triumphant. And it's just a magical album. The keyboard melodies here just really steal the show. Like, brings in, like, horns to just really add the triumphantness and the epicness up to 100 here. Like, the vocals also stand out as well. Just all in all, great performances, great songwriting, and that's why it's my favorite album by them. If I had to pick favorite tracks, A Tale from the Deep Woods, um, The Dark Liege of Chaos, which also has like a ton of other words after that, but <laughs> the, uh, their song titles are insane. But if you know the album, you know which song I'm talking about. And yeah, that is my favorite Bows to Goth album. So, as usual, love to get your picks down below. Give me your ranking of all six of these albums. Let me know what you think of the band in general. If you haven't checked them out before, do yourself a favor and go check them out. And until next time, Hammer Heart Metal Reviews, out.